Good morning, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. And excited pa silang lahat. Good morning, good morning for this uh, Sunday morning. Tell the person next to you, you look beautiful this morning. Wise decisions. For this morning, we'll talk about wise decisions. The question is, now I have a series of questions for you. Uh, for this morning First question How many decisions we make a day? Are you curious kung ilang decision Ang nagagawa natin sa isang araw? Alam nyo ba Na uh, It's estimated That the average adult no, Makes more than 35,000 Decisions per day Imagine no, what I'm going to wear for this morning, what I'm going to, uh, where, uh, what car will I use. So there's a lot of decision, 35,000 a day. And uh, some of these decisions are the so-called life-changing decisions. And we need to be wise, especially for these life-changing decisions. The considered biggest life-changing uh uh, decisions are probably am I getting divorced or not? How about will I adopt a child or will I, are we going to start a family by having a child or not? Am I getting married or not? How about do I need to move to a new state or not? Do I need to go to abroad or not? How about making decision for your children? Where to go to school or how we're going to advise him or her uh, as they go along with this life. How about buying a home or not? And for those who are single, who are romantically involved, do I need to end my romantic relationship or not? These are all big decisions in life, right? You see, a wise person is called a lore master. No, look at the person next to you. Tell the person to your right, you are a lore master. Look at the person to your left, tell that person, you are a chronicler. Another term is a sage. Wise person with varied knowledge is a lore master, chronicler, or a sage. But we have a Pinoy version of this. We call him Tatalino. <laughs> Alam niyo ba na ang English word no, that uh, for wise woman is Minerva. Minerva is the name of the goddess entered English in an old English period, the sense of wise woman. Dates from the late 18th century. Minerva. Now I know na kaya pala Lagi ako nautusan sa bahay because my wife's name is Minerva. It seems that she's wiser compared to me. But the, 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 the most important question for this morning would be, what steps do you take when you are faced with an important decision? I'd like to share to you three important learnings that we need to ponder upon. For this morning number one we need to consult the word of god number two we need to seek wise counsel and number three we need to ask god for confirmation let's start with number one that is consulting the word of god you see this is like a manual when you buy a samsung tv you get a manual right when you buy an iphone you get a manual right what is the first thing we do with our manual? We put it away. We don't read it. And then suddenly, our TV will break down. And then, ah, that's a new manual. Seems the same with our life. We need to read the manual first, enable for us to be successful in our lives. 
You see, in Psalm 119, 105, it was read by Tita Fe a while ago. It says here that your word, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. You see, a lamp for my feet, it seems that the person who's talking is, uh, he or she is describing that uh, he or she is in a dark place and he or she needs a lamp that will serve as a light on his or her pathway. Sa maganda nating wika, ang sabi dito, salita mo'y isang tanglaw na sa akin ay patnubay. Sa landas kong daraanan, liwanag na tumatanglaw. Isn't it beautiful? Right? It's beautiful. And especially with our native tongue. You see, under the consult the Word of God, there are three sub-learnings that we need to understand. Number one, we need to pray, have a conversation with God. Number two, or letter B, we need to seek God's counsel through His Word, using His Word. Not, not using other people's counsel, but counsel using His Word. Later on, we'll go there. But for this time, Seeking God's counsel using through His Word. And let her see, praising God in all things. You see, after you prayed, after you seek God's counsel using His Word, the manifestation would be praises to our God. The reason why you're all excited, singing, you know, smiling at God, and you have this blessed heart when you are worshiping the Lord this morning because it is manifesting the blessings of God, the blessings of God for your life, for the life of your families, and for this church. Aren't you blessed you are part of this church? Amen? Alam nyo, let's start with letter A. Pray. Pray and have a conversation with God. You see, when you say pray, when you say conversation, we have this thinking that praying means asking the Lord for all that we need. And Jesus told us how to pray. That is ACTS, Acts. Adoration, you adore the Lord, Lord, Lord. You are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You are the best there is. You are, you are my God. Thank you for... You see, letter C, you confess your sins. And letter T, for thanksgiving. Thanking Him for all the things that He has blessed you. And letter S, are for supplications. This time we asked for all our needs. Jesus told, taught us how to pray. But you see, we have this idea that praying is all about supplication. Lord, baka naman, patamain mo ako sa loto. Lord, please, I love this person. No? Will, will, will he be the, 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 the one na, na I'll get married to? You see, praying is not a monologue. Praying is a dialogue. After you talk to God, you start to listen to God. What would be His answer? Sometimes the Lord will answer you through reading the Word. Oh, this is like a rema. You know, you know what is rema? Words that are jumping out from your Bible. So heavy in your heart that there is this great conviction that you need to do it, that you need to follow it, that you need to obey it. How about just watching TV and then this uh, commercial speak to you, uh, God is speaking to you through that commercial. How about just driving in the freeway, listening to a, a podcast or listening to a, 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 a worship song and then you, you, you find yourself, you, start, you, start, you started crying and, oh Lord, I know that you've been speaking. You see, that is conversation. You ask the Lord, you adore Him. You confess your sins, you thank Him, you ask for whatever you need and for the needs of other people, then wait, wait for His answers. Wait that He will speak to you. Amen? You see, conversation, again, is a dialogue. So you need to wait for, another, for, for the other person to respond. You see, in our church, Prayer is very important. 
That's why we allocated every Wednesday. This used to be the prayer breakfast every Saturday. Now, every Wednesday, 8 p.m. on Zoom, all the members, workers, leaders of this church gather together every Wednesday just to pray for the church, just to pray for everyone in the list. So if you are part of the list, you are being prayed for. If you are not part of the list, you're still being prayed for. Praying for everything under the sun. Praying for countries. Praying for uh, peace. Praying for anything. Praying for all your prayer requests. Because praying, prayer, is, a, is the backbone of our ministry. You see, if you join a church and that church doesn't pray, I don't think the church will go somewhere. Do you agree with that? Because you, imagine you have this great plan of going somewhere, but you are not asking or talking to the boss. You see, you have, you need, we need to have this great conversation with God, no? and we have to have a pattern, a time, a schedule for Him to talk to Him and lay down everything, lay down our plans, and pray for our members so that no, He will guide us and He will answer us. For our God is an answering God. Letter B, you need to seek God's counsel through His Word. What do we mean by this? You see, seeking God's counsel through His Word is that every Wednesday also, 8 o'clock is the prayer gathering, right? We call it the upper Zoom because it's in Zoom. But also every Wednesday, 7 to 8 p.m., and it has been running now for a year. We started this September last year you know, from Genesis, and now we are in the book of uh, 1 Peter and 2 Peter. Imagine matatapos na until Revelation. No? Every Wednesday, 7 o'clock, we have our virtual midweek. That is the walk through the Bible. We are, we are uh, 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 discussing the Bible book by book, every Wednesday, we give you like, I mean, when you are about to watch a movie, there's a trailer. Or ang uso ngayon, fast cut. No, it's a summary. We do that every Wednesday. So, why are we doing this? Because we believe as a church, we don't, have, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just have to teach your people how to pray, how to read the Bible, and I tell you the truth, they will grow. They will grow. They will grow. I don't have to have a beautiful program or whatever it is. I need to uh, hire a staple center or whatever. Just teach your people how to pray and read the Bible. Chinatsaga namin yan every Wednesday. It's not easy for you to summarize an entire book and to summarize it, you know, and then you try to uh, uh, deliver it in a way that people will understand in a Filipino context. You see, that's why we give importance no, in, uh, in reading the Bible. I don't know, with you, some of you probably are old school, you're still using your, your, um, your, you know, your text Bible. Some of you are using your, uh, what do you call this, a tablet, or you're using your, uh, your uh, cell phone. It doesn't matter. What matters most is that you read the Bible. Okay? Kaya nga ngayon, eh, before, I remember during the early 1990s, the pastor will always start with, let's turn, uh, let's uh, open our Bibles too, and then you'll hear the, you know, yung shh ng mga, ano, ng mga Biblia, di ba? Ngayon, nasabihin na, let's uh, open our Bible, let's, uh, let's open our Bible, and let's turn on our Bible, because now, a lot of people are doing it electronically. How about letter C? Praise God in all things. You see, uh, we're talking about consulting the Word of God. After, after we pray, have a conversation with God, after we seek God's counsel through His Word, you see, the manifestation is praising God in all things. I'd like to remind you that you, need, you don't allow the enemy to stop you from praising God. Because praising God is a manifestation of, uh, of uh, 
of uh, communicating to God, of uh, uh, consulting the Word of God. Starting, uh, regarding this praising God, starting uh, next October, how, how, how many of you believe that the worship team is doing a great job? Do you believe that? Let's give a clap offering for God for the worship team. They're doing a great job. Imagine before pandemic, there's no such thing as worship team. And now we have a worship team, young and vibrant worship team. Aren't we blessed? Amen? Amen. But starting October, Pastor Teen and the, the entire team will have uh, a different approach in worship. Because we, we, we say here that we need to praise God in all things as we, as we, uh, as we consult the Word. No, starting October, no, they are thinking to uh, invite all the ministries in praising God. What do we mean by this? You see, our young adults and young, uh, uh, young people ministry, we call them alab and siklab. You see, alab is a Filipino term for burning passion. That's burning passion for God. Siklab means, what do you mean by siklabs in English? Um, it's park. Now, these are forerunners, the starters. We need youth, amen? Because we need to transfer the Joshua generation to our youth. And our youth will lead you to worship one Sunday. How about Busilak? Busilak means pure in heart. These are our women's ministry, and they will also lead you one Sunday. How about the Dakila? Dakila. Dakila are the men's ministry. Tingnan nyo nga yung mga kalalaki, mukha ba silang Dakila? <laughs> These are our men, men's ministry, and they will also lead the worship. How about the Sinag? Sinag means sunshine. It's like a ray of hope. This is our children's ministry, and they will also lead the worship one Sunday. Aren't you excited? Hey, Pastor, why are we doing this? Because we want to tell everyone, we want to share to everyone that everyone is being called to worship God. Amen? Eh, di ba excited ka? Oh, my Sunday will come that I will go there and praise the Lord and worship Him. Right? Aren't you excited for that? And every time somebody here is uh, leading the worship, you are there worshiping, you're also excited because you know how to be you, know, you have experienced how to be here and lead the congregation to worship. Amen? Because worship, praise and worship is a part of life. It, 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 is, a, it, is, it is a culture. And I praise God, we have a, a, a great team, a great worship team. You see, going back to, uh, as we say, sa ating three learnings that we need to ponder, is that we need to consult the Word of God. We're talking about having, uh, how, how to come up with a wise decision. This Sunday, Lord, how do I come up with a wise decision in my life? Remember, 35,000 decisions in a day? I need to have a wise decision, especially for those big ones. We need to consult the Word of God. Number two, we need to seek wise counsel. We're pertaining to a person this time. How do we do this? How do we seek wise counsel? In Proverbs 15, 22, it says here, Plans fail when there is no counsel. But with many, many advisors, they succeed. Napakaganda sa wika natin ito. Ang isang balak na mabilis ay di papakinabangan. Ngunit ang planong pinag-aralan ay nagtatagumpay. Amen? Alam nyo, under uh, seeking wise counsel, we have sub-learnings that we need to, uh, uh, to uh, kumbaga, dig deeper. No? Letter A, we need to seek godly counsel and prayer partners. So we look for a person. No? Letter B, not just look, but surround yourself 
with godly mentors and others you can go to for advice. What do we mean by this? Let's start with seeking godly counsel and prayer partners. You see, when this world, you ask this world, go to a, a, a wise person, to a sage, a lore master. No? This is like telling the person, oh, punta ka kay idol. Right? Do sa Jedi master. Right? Kasi punong-puno yan ang, uh, is filled with wisdom. But I tell you the truth, if you are looking for a godly counsel, go to a godly person. Go to a fellow believer. Never, ever seek a counsel from an unbeliever. Why? Because obviously, the point of view is not godly. Amen? What if, pastor, the unbeliever is mas mabait kesa sa believer? Still, go to the believer. Because the believer has a God. The unbeliever, they don't have a God. Amen? You need to be wise in choosing who you listen to. You need to be wise in choosing who you listen to. Letter B, you need to surround surround yourself with godly mentors and others you can go to for advice. Ika nga, sa isang German proverb, sabi dito, no one is wise enough to advise himself. Right? <laughs> Tama naman, di ba? Alam niyo, naalala ko tuloy yung kwento doon sa 1 Kings chapter 3, 16 to 28. Napakagandang kwento nito. It recounts that two li- mothers living in the same house, each mother of an infant son came to King Solomon. One of the babies had been smothered and each claimed the remaining boy as her own. Calling for a sword, Solomon declared his judgment. The baby would be cut in two. Each woman to receive half. Ha! Katakot naman to. Ano ba yan? Bakit hindi natin tingnan ano nangyari sa kwento na to? Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 3, verse, verses 16 to 20. If you have your Bibles, it's okay. You can open it. If you don't have your Bibles, we have our uh, PowerPoint. So this is about the wisdom of King Solomon, no? Wisdom. You see, Solomon is that kind of king na tipong uh, natuwa si Lord sa kanya. Solomon, what do you want? I'll give it to you. So, obviously, di ba? Pag tinanong ka, anong gusto mo? Eh, syempre, pera-pera lang. Di ba? Lord, I want wealth. Obviously, hello. Solomon, sabi niya, I want wisdom because I am a ruler. I am a leader. I need wisdom. So God gave him wisdom. And until now, no, nobody, kumbaga wala daw makakatapat sa talino ni Solomon. And not only that, but wait, there's more. Since hindi ka nagsalita about wealth, I will not just give you wisdom, but I will also give you wealth. And until now, wala daw mas mayaman pa kay Solomon. Kahit si Jeff Bezos, yung kapatid ko, mas mayaman daw si Solomon. Okay? So, let's talk about the wisdom of Solomon. Then, in verse 16, it says here, Then two women who were prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. May dalawang babae na kung saan sila ay nagbebenta ng aliw na magkasama sa loob ng bahay at uh, dumulog kay Haring Solomon. One woman said, Please, my lord, this woman, I live in the same house, and I had a baby while she was in the house. No? Sabi niya, ah, Panginoong Solomon, ah, dinggin niyo kami. Mer- mer- itong babae nito, kasama ko sa bahay, meron akong baby, no? kasama ko siya. On the third day, alam niyo po, sa pangatlong araw, I, after I gave birth, she also had a baby and we were alone. Parehas po kaming may baby. No one else was with us in the house. Dalawa lang po kami. Naku, Haring Solomon, hindi pa po uso ang CCTV nung araw eh. Just the two of us were there. During the night, verse 19, this woman's son died because she lay on him. I experienced this. We had a neighbor, it was late 1990s, uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. They were shouting, Ah! No, as in, they were, napalabas ako ng bahay, 3 a.m. 
And then I asked them, do you need help? Anything? Sabi nila, my baby, she's not breathing, she's not breathing. You know, sa Tagalog, hindi na humihinga yung anak ko, hindi na humihinga. So I checked and I saw, pag turn on ng light, kulay violet na yung bata. But still, although I know that the baby is already dead, no, I rushed the baby to the hospital sa Chinese Zen. No, kasi we live in uh, Kanlaon, uh, Retiro Street. No, Chinese Gen is like, Chinese General Hospital is like less than a mile away from us. And the baby is dead on arrival. Why? Because while they were sleeping, Filipino style, the baby is beside you, right? No, if you have a baby, do not lay the baby beside you because that happened to our neighbor. And this is what happened to the story here. During the night, this woman's son died because she lay on him. Sa Tagalog, nadaganan. She got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your servant was asleep. So, ginawa niya po, pinagpalit niya yung anak namin. She laid him in her arms and she put her dead son in my arms. When I got up in the morning to nurse my son, paggising ko sa umaga ng aking padidide ng mga anak ko, I discovered he was dead. That morning, when I looked closely at him, I realized that he was not the son I gave birth to. Hello, a mother is a mother. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na ipilit na, no, 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 that's your son. There were like, sa KMJS, Jessica So, whatever, there was, there was this story about switching of babies. And the mother already knew, no, this is, my, this is not my son. How can you tell? It's, it's, it's only about 24 hours the last time you've seen your son. No, this is not my son. I am the mother because a mother is a mother. Amen? Do you agree with that, mothers? A mother is a mother. Alam mo kung sino yung anak mo. And this woman said, sabi ng isang babae, no, 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 no. The other woman said, my son is the living one. Your son is the dead one. Hindi, ito yung anak ko. Ito yung, ito yung anak ko na, na, na buhay, sabi niya. Ang patay yung anak mo. The first woman said, No! Your son is the dead one. My son is the living one. So they argued before the king. Nag-away sila sa harapan ni King Solomon. The king replied, You see, this woman, th this woman says, This is my son who is alive. And your son is dead. But the woman says, No, your son is dead. And my son is ang gulo. Diba? Ginawa nilang tulfo si King Solomon. You see, the king continued, Bring me a sword. Ooh. So they brought the sword to the king. And the king said, Cut the living boy in two and give half one and half to the other. Sa madaling salita. Sige, bigyan nyo ko ng spada, hatiin sa gitna yung bata at 50% sa kanya, 50% sa kanya. Imagine, no? Kung ikaw ang tunay na ina, ano magiging reaction mo? The woman whose son was alive spoke to the king because she felt great compassion for her son. My Lord, give her the living baby, she said. But please don't help him kill. Please, Lord. You are the mother. Of course, that would be your reaction, right? Di bali nang di ko mapalaki, buhay naman yung anak mo. But the other one said, He will not be mine or yours. Go ahead, cut him in two. Kakaimbiyer na itong isang babae na ito. Palibasa, hindi niya anak eh. And the king responded, Give the living baby to the first woman. And don't kill him. She is his mother. Bakit? Bakit? Kasi, a mother's heart will always prevail. A mother's heart will always do whatever is best for, he, for her son. Right? Do you agree with that? Alam nyo, all Israel heard about the judgment the king had given and they stood in awe of the king because they saw that God's wisdom was in him to carry out justice. You see, in leadership, you need wisdom. And please, do not use your own wisdom. Use the wisdom of God. In fact, since all Israel 
heard about the judgment the king had given, anong ginawa ng mga tao, ng mga, ng, uh, ng mga bansa, the, the, the royalties, they give gifts to King Solomon because, wow, hangang-hanga sila sa wisdom ni Solomon. Let's go back to our learning for this morning. Number one, consult the Word of God. Number two, as we, are, as we wish to arrive to a wise decision, we need to seek wise counsel. We need to surround ourselves with good, godly mentors. And number three, as we end, we need to ask God for confirmation. Ask God? How do we ask God? You see, in Colossians 3.15, And let the peace of Christ, to which you were also called in one body, rule your hearts and be thankful. What do we mean by this? Sabi natin, in able for you to come up with a wise decision, you need to ask God for confirmation. What is the confirmation of God? How do we know, Pastor, that God is you know, confirming our inquiry? Simply lang. Kapag may kapayapaan. Amen? Sa ating wika, paghariin ninyo sa inyong puso ang kapayapaang kaloob ni Kristo. Sapagkat yan ang dahilan kung bakit kayo tinawag na iisang katawan. Do you know that we are called as one body? One body of Christ? We need, to get, we need each other, right? Magpasalamat kayong lagi. In everything, give thanks. Always be thankful to God. No? Kapag may kapayapaan, if there is peace, there is God's confirmation. Under this, no? asking for God confirmation, we have three sub-learnings. Letter A, we need to look for the fingerprints of God. No, as you ask God for confirmation, look for the fingerprints of God. You see, fingerprints are very important. Nowadays, you cannot open a cell phone or a tablet or whatever without your fingerprint, right? Some, some, some other um, uh, companies, they use fingerprints to uh, enter or log in or log out sa kanilang uh, timesheet. So you need to look for the fingerprints of God. Let her be, you see, we need to understand that feeling are deceptive. Wag tayong papakasiguro sa ating nararamdaman. And let her see, we need to get our heart right. Let's start with looking for the fingerprints of God. What do we mean by looking for the fingerprints of God? You see, the fingerprints of God is stated in the Bible. These are the characteristics of God. Who God really is. Sino ba ang Diyos natin? I remember a story about one small voice can start a revolution. One small voice can start a revolution. In 2004, Viktor Yushchenko stood for the presidency of the Ukraine. Vehemently opposed by the ruling party, Yushchenko's face was disfigured and he almost lost his life when he was mysteriously poisoned. This was not enough to deter him from standing for the presidency. Look at him before and after. Si Victor ay isang uh, kumakanditadong pagkapangulo. So ang ginawa, since malakas siya, nilason siya. At ang epekto ng lason ay ano nangyari sa kanyang mukha. On the day of the election, Yushchenko was comfortably in the lead. The ruling party, not to be denied, tampered. The state-run television station reported, Ladies and gentlemen, we announce that the challenger, Viktor Yushchenko, has been decisively defeated. Well, parang, let's get it ready to rumble. Talo si Victor. Talo ba talaga? O dinaya? ba? In the lower right-hand corner of the screen, a woman by the name of Natalia Dimitruk was providing a translation service for the day. Nasa, di ba, pag TV, nanonood kayo, meron sa, sa right hand, kapwa ko, mahal ko, may gumaganon, di ba? So, ito nagtatranslate. Here's the thing. No? Ang nakakaintindi lang nun ay deaf community. As the news presenter no, regurgitated the lies of the regime, Natalia Dimitsuk refused to translate them. Sabi niya, although hindi ko alam, sana pala nagpaturo kay Tep, 
I'm addressing all the deaf citizens of Ukraine. Sabi niya, nag-sign siya. They are lying. And I'm ashamed to translate those lies. Ito is a president. Ang problema, ayan si Natalia, ang problema, deaf community lang ang nakakaintindi sa kanya. But here's the thing. Do not underestimate the deaf community. Amen? Do not underestimate our brothers and sisters who has disability. Amen? Because they are also children of God. Here's the thing. The deaf community sprung into gear. They text message their friends about their, the fraudulent result and the new spread of Dimitruk's act of defiance. Increasing numbers of journalists were inspired to likewise tell the truth. It became what? It became contagious. Telling the truth became contagious. You see, there is power. No? There is power of texting. You want? Through texting, pwede ka magpabagsak ng gobyerno. Over the coming weeks, the orange revolution, tayo, we, we experienced this. I don't, know if you, I don't know if some of you were alive during the 1986 uh, election. It was a battle between Marcos and Cory. And uh, there was this inauguration right away by President Marcos and he proclaimed that he's the winner. The Comelec proclaimed he's the winner. But the National Computer Center located at Ge uh, General Emilio Aguinaldo in Murphy, Quezon City, the, 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 the programmers, they're looking at the different numbers. And what they did, nag-walk out sila. Because they can't take it anymore. The cheating, the lying, and everything. That started a revolution. We call that the EDSA revolution. The yellow revolution. But this one has a different color. They call it the orange revolution. Occurred as a million people wearing orange made their way to the capital city of Kiev demanding a new election. The government was forced to meet their demands. A new election was held and Viktor Yushchenko became president. You see, as we look for the fingerprints of God, one good characteristic of God is God is not a liar. Tell that to the person next to you. God is not a liar. Alala niya yung ano? I'm a liar, I'm a liar, I'm a liar. You see, God is not a liar. In Numbers 23, 19, it says here that God is not a man that he might lie or a son of man that he might change his mind. Does he speak and not act or promise and not fulfill? No. His very characteristic is not a liar. So stand for the truth. Enable for you to uh, understand what do we mean by looking for the fingerprints of God. One fingerprint of God that is uh, uh, somehow very, very admirable is that he is a God of truth. He's not a liar. Just like Natalia Dimitru. Hindi siya sinungaling. Pero look at what happened. No? Even though the world says that you go to the left, but the word of God says you go to the right, you stand for the truth. I experience this. Every time, makain kami, uh, being the leader of the company, and uh, we, we have this great relationship, close relationship. Yung anak nila, inaanak ko, you know. And somebody committed a mistake, embezzled some funds, and I have to do what I have to do. I need to report it upstairs, and they called the police, and they picked him up. That is so hurtful to me, seeing that scenario. And the rest of the people, you know, the rest of the management team is looking at me. You're not going to do anything? For the last, for the next six months, hindi sila kumain ng kasabay ko, they hated me for that. But I have to do what I have to do. Because my God is not a liar. Even though all the people that surrounds me, they keep on telling that, no, go to the left. But my Bible says that I need to go to the right even though I will just stand alone. Being alone by myself, I will still stick with God. Amen? So do not forget, our God is not a liar. Always, always. Okay? Um, 
uh, look for the fingerprints of God. Letter B, feeling are deceptive. No? Deceptive ang feeling. Ang feeling. Usually, the enemy will always tell you a different story. The devil will whisper, no? the devil will whisper, you cannot withstand the storm. It is always a fearful thing to do. You will not make it. So just stop and cry. Be, be, be submerged into depression. Don't move. That's the devil convincing us. But you need to understand you are serving a great God. You need to reply with God. The warriors replied must be, no, considering that you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and He's sitting no, in the throne of your heart. You need to reply, I am the storm. My God can, you know, He can command the storm in a snap. So why you, you, you're telling me I cannot withstand the storm? The storm, who made the storm? Who can stop the storm is in my heart. How can you tell that? The devil is the liar. Our God is the truth. Amen? I remember as we talk about feeling are deceptive. No, when I was uh, in my early 20s, I got to know the Lord. Uh, you know, this was my first time walking into a church and there was this uh, young man who also sat beside me and uh, you know oh ibago ka dito yeah i'm kind of new here and uh, so he asked me do you have a girlfriend so i go uh, you know what yeah but here's the thing i heard the pastor told us about uh, laying down your isaac and i realized that the lord is telling me to lay down my isaac and you know my girlfriend now is She's not into, you know, learning about God. So I have to make a very hard decision and ask her for us to be, you know, uh, because she doesn't want to go with me in the church. Here's the thing. Sabi niya, you know what? I also then have a girlfriend. But here's the thing. I already prayed for my girlfriend. Sabi niya. So how do you do that? Because I'm kind of curious. Because Somehow, in the future, I also want to have, to have a girlfriend and, you know, marry someday. So, yeah, here's the thing. I, I always pray for this beautiful woman, young, beautiful woman, young, beautiful Christian woman. So, the Lord is telling me right now, here's what we're saying, that feeling are deceptive. The Lord is telling me right now, as, as, as you can see, there's a lot of young women chatting at the back. The first to enter that sanctuary, that would be my wife. With confidence. Sabi ko talaga. And then, sabi niya, surprise me bro, surprise me, tatalikod ako. And then there is this first woman who came in. Sabi niya, maganda, maganda bro. Sabi ko, panalo ka. Mabait, mabait bro, mabait. Sabi ko, mabait. In fact, part sa ng leadership. Oh talaga? Sabi niya, excited na ako. Sabi ko, sige harap ka na. Pag harap niya, ayun. Old maid. <laughs> 60 years old. <laughs> Dalaga naman. Pero 60 years old. Eh, 20 year old lang kami. So, three times ng age niya. So, what, what do we learn from this? You see, feeling are deceptive. You see, Christianity is not all about high feeling. Christianity is not about low feeling. Christianity is about in the sturdy love of God. Ask wisdom from the Lord. Let her see. Get your heart right. Let's end with this. You see, God gives us the free choice and free will to live our lives the way we desire. He's a gentleman, you know. God wants us to choose because we love Him and want to obey Him to make our decisions within the overall blueprint of His will. It is the Holy Spirit who can guide our choices even as we have freedom to make them. We need the Holy Spirit. Pag ikaw yon, holy pilit ang tawag doon, ha? Pero, intayin mo kasi yung Holy Spirit. But the question is, how does God direct our paths? Let's end with this. And this is one of my favorite Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
And please, do not lean on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge Him. What will be the result? He shall direct your paths. Do you agree with that? As we end, I'd like to remind you, there will be more 35,000 a day wise decisions you need to make. Some of these are big decisions in your life. Remember, please consider the learning that we need to ponder upon this morning. Number one, consult the God, the Word of God. Always read the Bible. Sa Tagalog, magbabad ka sa salita ng Diyos. Number two, seek wise counsel from the Word. Seek wise counsel from the people that surrounds you, especially for those people who are godly. And number three, always ask God for confirmation. And one of the manifestation of God's confirmation is peace in our heart. You see, one of the, the second best wise decision I made in my life is when I accepted you know, to mind my father's business. We had this gathering and, uh, you know, some of my contemporaries nowadays are, you know, we are in our mid, uh, what they call this, midlife. Some of us are 50 years old and we were talking about success and business and everything like that. So, ito pare, ito, no, yung apat na talyer ko, eh, ito pare, yung, ito, yung pabrika, na-expand ko naman, ganun yun to. Ayan, so, yung, yung pigiri sa Batanga, so, okay. Then I was asked, bro, what's your, what's your business? I don't know what to reply. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what to reply. But the Lord gave me wisdom. I answered to them, tell them, you're minding your father's business. That is my second best wise decision that I ever made in my life. But the first best wise decision is that I accepted Him as my personal Lord and Savior. You see, nobody else can save you today. You need to trust Jesus today. Paano, Pastor? How? Admit you're a sinner. That's wise. Be willing to turn from sin. If this is sin, turn 180. By sin, alikura mo, go away, run. No? If this is sin, do not turn 360. Kasi, hello sin, babalik ka lang. Believe that Jesus died for you, buried, and rose from the dead. Invite Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. I'd like to invite everyone to bow our heads, close our eyes as we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for you are a wise God and all wise decision comes from you alone. Thank you, Jesus, that uh, you, you're teaching us to consider the word. You're teaching us to ask God, to, to, you're teaching us to ask confirmation from you. You're teaching us to seek godly counsel from other people and from your word. Thank you, God, for we will not make mistake as long as we obey you. Lord, for those people who are watching us in Facebook and in YouTube and those people who are here who, hasn't, uh, who haven't received you as your personal Lord and Savior, please pray with all of your heart and repeat after me. Dear God, I am a sinner. I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus shed his precious blood and died for my sins. I am willing to turn from my sin and I know and I, I now invite Christ to come into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.